very Arlene Schofield. My name is Shireen Snow. My name is Carla A. Miles. This is Diana Camuto. This is Christine Dunford. And me, Ida. Charlie Macy. This is Walker Fannin. Buddy and Camille Dixon. And this is our dates for them. My name is Linda Preston, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 454. I'm here with the talented and beautiful Reggie Street, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Sure. Now, for people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up and you should prove people wrong. Prove to them by labels not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's approved to them you can break the labels. So hashtag break the labels. That being said, half hour, 32 minutes every time. Do have a couple questions for you off the air. But starting off, what can you tell us about yourselves? Um, let's see, what can I say about myself? Uh, I'm a bookkeeper during the day, and uh, my side thing is acting. Um, I do produce a show called Cool Stories, where I invite other artists that create to come and exhibit their work. Every artist has about 15 minutes to show something to an audience and it's free for the audience and it's free for the artists. I try to do it twice a year, but it normally, sometimes it only happens once a year because I just get so busy with other projects. But yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing I guess I'm proud of is cool stories. No, absolutely. Now for an example, would you think I fall under that category? Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, we could definitely like, play one of your um one of your your interviews or you could actually talk about like come and talk about the people that you interview i think you are a pretty cool story it's all about my my whole objective with cool stories is not just to give people a chance to show their art but just to you know bring people together and show that we're not so different after all we all have the same kind of needs and wants and and all that kind of stuff and I like to hear people of all different kinds of, anywhere from the, you know, from the spectrum on, on the rainbow. I like to hear what their story is. And, and people don't realize that telling their story, sharing their, their likes and dislikes and their disadvantages can help someone else. No, I agree with you. You know, everything we do in life, it's a learning experience. Yep. Now, the next thing I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you some easy questions, then we can go to the hard-hitting ones. First, uh. first one is, what can you tell us about life growing up, and how actually how was life growing up? And also, when you went to college, were you a study nerd or a party animal? Um, life growing up was, it was not so bad. I mean, I had four other brothers and sisters, so... We always had a good time with one another, you know. So, um, I mean, there were some down things like my parents got divorced and that was a downer. And, you know, my, my brothers and sisters, they're older than I am. So at some point it was just me and my younger brother and we, you know, kind of tagged along. So our, our family basically split apart for a while. But um, overall, I mean, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but we made things work. So growing up wasn't so bad. College, 
college, I wasn't a party animal, but I, I went away to school. And I guess, and and I was always like a, a homebody. So going away to school, I think I had a hard time adjusting being away and being on my own and studying. So my first year, I didn't do so hot. <laughs> But uh, it wasn't from partying. It was just me adjusting to life away from home. But after that, things got better. All right. Before I ask you my other question, as I'm, I'm just uh, hypnotized by the picture behind you, that's a really cool Super, um, super Nintendo thing you have. <laughs> it's actually, I'm at work, and that's actually uh, just the wallpaper on the monitor behind me. I think it's it's mailboxes. Ah. On my distance, it looks like something from Super Mario Bros. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> now, my other question I was going to ask you is, did he ever do any sports growing up? Um, Not really. Um, You know, like growing up in Queens, you know, I would like play some kind of version of like baseball. I guess you call it stickball or something like that and would jump rope. But that's about it, really. I'm not really a sports person, per se. I was a cheerleader in high school, but that's about it. What about, did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids, or not into the whole human pyramid stuff? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I've done I've done those, like, a few times. Um, <laughs> uh, not very high, though. Like, maybe, like, one or two tiers up, not, like, all the way up to the top with five people. That that wasn't me. I wasn't the climber. So, what's it like one of those uh, six per... It's different sizes, you know. It's like the smallest is a three person, then it's a six person, then it's ten and then fifteen. So, you did like one of those six person or ten people? Um, It's been so long. I think the smallest I've done was like two people on their hands and knees and then you stand on their back. So like maybe, yeah, that's like a three person yeah. pyramid pretty much. I love that stuff. I'm a loser. <laughs> uh, it's pretty hard to climb. I mean, and, and plus there's the fact that, you know, I'm a little bit afraid of heights, so I, I couldn't get that high. It's true. Would he ever be up for it or you don't do that stuff? No. Anymore? <laughs> hey, never say never, right? I know. <laughs> now, my next question I was going to ask you is who influenced you to become a storyteller and how many years have you been a storyteller? Um, that's a good question. Um, I can't really say any one thing influenced me. I guess what happened was me studying to be an actor, I found that, you know, there's not a lot of roles for me and my type and the roles that are there, you know, there's so much competition for them. So I decided to just start it writing myself because I did write a little bit back in high school short stories. And so I started writing and then just to see how an audience would take to my writing, I developed cool stories. And since, you know, I have a full time job, it wasn't feasible to me to write for a whole show. So I would ask my actor friends, hey, do you want to come do the show with me? And so it kind of took from there that I just kept doing it. Every every year I would have a show or two, and it took from there. It's based, I guess I, it started for me wanting to um, find work for myself. That's true. You know, like for me, I always... <laughs> I have ADD, so I always have to be busy. I I am always have to be doing something, mm -hmm. and um, so I have to either be doing my talk show that I'm very passionate about, mm -hmm. when I don't have any interviews, I like to be working. Right. So you should write. I suck at writing. <laughs> uh, well, everyone has an idea. Maybe if you can't interpret it in words, you can at least make an outlet for or uh, outline of it. And then maybe someone can help you write it, what, you know, fill in the whole paragraphs and stuff to what you're trying to say. But everyone has a story to tell. Actually, it's funny you should mention that. I do have something here. I don't really need it anymore. Actually, I was going to throw them out. But, you know, this one is already ripped. 
Uh, so know. basically, we'll make a long story short, I have two cousins for you. Now, I mean, you can't see anything on my side, and I do apologize. I don't know why That's okay. FaceTime That's okay. isn't working. But what I'm holding in my hands, it's one of those uh, storyboards. Okay. If you're a story writer, have you ever used a storyboard before? I've tried, but for me, I don't know if it's just laziness or if I just want to get the story out. But what I do is when I have an idea, I just like to write it to get it all out, just to get it out of me. And then if I have to go back and make adjustments or make a storyboard because I'm actually trying to film it or whatever the case may be, then I'll do that. But I've never actually made a storyboard for myself. It's always just been all in my head. No, absolutely. You know, the reason I bring up the storyboard is uh, I was supposed to have a studio. Now, before I go into details, I want your honest opinion. I know this mm -hmm. is her second time doing her interview, and I forgot to give you our permission form. So afterwards, I do need you to sign that so I have sure. use of this interview. But um, the reason I got the permission form and the guy is like, oh, well, you know, I want to know what you're doing and we're talking about. So I said, let's do it right now. Let's talk about it right here. So I don't have the time for that. So mm -hmm. I was looking at it. like, all right. To make a long story short, I um, called him back yesterday. It's like, are we still going on? He got very wink, wink. Very got annoyed because... I was promoting myself. I don't mean to bitch to you. I apologize. No, no, it's good, good. Let it out. <laughs> well, exactly. I don't mean to bitch to you. It's it's just one of those things that... And yes, I do use the word bitch because a lot of people say, oh, you should use the word complain. But I, oh, I say it to my sister. I say it to my brother. I'm sorry to bitch to you. It's like, why do you speak like that? I don't know. Force a habit, I guess. <laughs> So, you know, they say the most honest people are the people that use profanity, so. It's true. <laughs> but no disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, long story short, um, I called him back. He said to me, well, you promoted it, my show. My show was supposed to be on um, Autumn TV on Channel mm -hmm. 22. That's um, public broadcasting. And for the town I live in. And I was like, okay, let's have the Keith Angie Network. Because when, when I'm persistent, I just go for it, you know, uh, full throttle. Actually, that's not a bad drink. I used to drink that. <laughs> but uh, I used to go full throttle. And it's like, I want to do something. I'm going to do it. That's part of my ADD. I need to be in the driver's seat. I have to have hands on. So All I right. said in my promo, Keith Angie Network presents the sit down with Keith Andrew, and I have the promo somewhere if you still want to see it, mm -hmm. and um, so they got crazy about that, it's like, you know, how dare you do that without our permission, and it's like, you never actually told me I was not allowed to promote it, all you said was get people to be on the show, and I got like, I don't know, 20, 25 people, and then, then I have to go back now and explain to them what happened and they pulled a plug underneath me because their wink wink hires up got crazy because I made my own promo of promoting mm -hmm. the show and mm -hmm. I'm like if you're just gonna randomly you know throw shit against the wall and say hey watch this and people will be like huh what is this you're not going to get their attention it's like how are you supposed to you know advertise your post advertise oh hey look there's a new show coming on, I don't know, on Wednesday, our right. time right now, 5 o'clock. New show, Wednesday, 5 o'clock, Challenge 20. Check it out. Not say, here you go, you randomly got to be on, and if people watch it, great. If not, that's not how it works. So I did everything right. What's your well, opinion you know, so far? You said it was public access, right? Yes, it's basically a channel that... um. It broadcasts is like if the school board had a meeting or just uh -huh. like meetings around town, they would have does. Well, I've heard of people kind of doing public access and
and like because there's a place in the city where if you you can use their facilities and you can take classes there and once you take the classes you can use the facilities there okay. and then once you learn how to use the facility and the equipment you can put on a show on public access and they told me that you know and I was giving them ideas for their show as well and they said well you know I can't self promote I have to be very careful with my wording and things like that so from what i understand this that is a problem with public yeah. access tv is that they're very they're very kind of strict with what you say about promoting your show and other services and things like that well that was so, the thing but not to interrupt i apologize no that's okay go ahead and it's like he didn't say any of that to me so i thought I'm, i know i know and i and and that stinks that you know it wasn't clear up front that they didn't address that to you or maybe they assumed that you knew because you you know you you do this type of work so it it sucks that you know at the end of the day that you kind of got screwed but i i have heard that that's kind of a rule in public access that they don't allow that it's just unfortunate for you <laughs> it's true and i got yeah. two more parts of the story if you want to hear it sure the other thing they said that got me annoyed was, um, let's see, to, um, oh, the introduction. I created my own introduction for, like, this show. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe I can create a new introduction or maybe I can just use the same introduction. They didn't, did, <laughs> I did it, did it, I'm stuttering. I sound like I'm more fun. <laughs> they didn't like the fact I had, uh, you know how you say on certain networks, um, and I would love to have you a part of this too. It's video clips or sound bites and say, you know, uh, my name's Red Jade and it comes to me. My name is Keith and you're Watson the Keith Engine Network. They didn't like that. They didn't like mm -hmm. the fact I created my own introduction. And yeah. they didn't like the fact I had my own credits. And yeah. they said they didn't want any of that. They want it as cheap as possible. I said, fine. I guess I can make it work. Mm -hmm. And then they said something that really struck a nerve was the fact, and this was the, what broke the camel's back. He said, after you do the interview, we're going to have all rights to this. Yes, yes. And I said, uh -uh. Too. I said, yeah. absolutely not. I'm paying for the name Keith Angie Network. It's coming out of my bank account. I never right. sign anything. I'm not going to sign anything. That name belongs to me. You want to have the episode use and have use of it? Fine. But to keep Angie Nellert, I'm taking that to the grave with me. That's mine. Yeah. I've heard that, too. I've heard that they, they own everything, and I think they have the rights for a certain amount of time. It's not indefinitely, but I think they have, like, for a year or so, if, I, if I'm correct. I don't remember. But, yeah, they do have the rights to... Um, whatever you record, but, you know, some people don't care because they just want the exposure. Yeah. But for you, you might be better off, like, trying to get into, like, the YouTube lab or something like that because they don't have those type of restrictions. No, absolutely. You know, it's... Even I I really don't give a damn about the episodes. Like, you want to have use of the episode, that's fine. You know, but, you know, just saying you're going to take take away the use of the key Angie network and I can't use that anymore. Yeah. That's really what struck a nerve. Right. Anyway, that's just me. But I'm passing it over to you. Have you ever thought about working in public access, what we were just talking about? And have you... Uh... Oh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I forgot the second part. <laughs> I actually had thought about it a long time ago before, like before like i don't know maybe 10 years ago cuz there was this episode of uh, married with children where um Kelly Bundy got a show on public access and then it became so popular that it went to hollywood <laughs> so for that one episode i had thought about doing public access but now since i've heard other people's stories like yours and what it requires to use their facilities I'm not interested anymore, and I think, um, I won't say I'm beyond it, but I've moved on to film, so I'm, that's why I am now. I'm, I'm not really interested in, in doing that anymore. 
not even for cool stories, because someone said, oh, you should, you know, do something like that on public access. But then there's all these rights and things that they own. And it's like, no, <laughs> I'd rather just not have it taped and keep cool stories underground where yeah. people, you know, in the industry know about it and they come support it. That's true. And the other thing I was going to do is, you know, like I said, I don't care about the episodes. As long as I keep the name and I can still do my own project, right. but, you know, that's fine. But I was still going to do my own talk show. Yes, you know, the sit down would have been on TV, but this is the Keith Angie Network show and I would have it on YouTube. So right. I wouldn't just be like a, a one trick pony saying, right. hey, what's well, okay, it's on TV, then I'm going to drop whatever I'm doing. I'm going right. to be, you know, both. Like, I, even if I become famous, I'm still going to work retail because when I don't work, I would like to have something to do. Right. So it's just, I don't know, a lot of people, you know, uh, talk about money. And the other thing that annoyed me, and I promise I drop it, it's that he said to me I wasn't the right fit. But what antagonized me about that was, why did you give me a tour of the building? Why did you get my hopes up? And saying, okay, we're going to, it's supposed to be this week. We're going to start this week. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah, we changed our mind. You're not good enough. You're not a right fit. I'm like, where the hell did that even come from? Why? Because I, I did my own promotion? It, right. I, I wouldn't believe any of that crap because, you know, just like me and, you know, and what agents have told me, you know, they like my work but they don't know what to put me. Yeah. The thing is with Hollywood and all that is they don't know what they want until they see it. Like Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga no was not a type, but now that she's famous, you know, people want a Lady Gaga type. But but if you look like Lady Gaga before Lady Gaga come out, they wouldn't know what to do with you. So just keep doing what you're doing and Hollywood will make room for you. Or wherever you want to be, they'll make room for you to be where you need to be. And if I want your honest opinion about something, and then I sure. promise we're going to take a break, then I'll pass the show over to you, is do you think they want people to watch that channel, number one? And number two, do you think they want something that stands out and, you know, I can't snap my fingers. They want something that catches them right away. Because I feel I, I will be a good fit. Can you repeat the question again? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, basically, make a long story short, I'm like, um, are you a wrestling fan? Mm, not really, but I was as a kid, but not nowadays. There's this wrestler I have the looks of. I know you can't see me. You gotta see it afterwards. I have the look of uh, Randy Orton and John. When I wear a hat, I look like John Cena. Mm -hmm. But I have the personality of the Miz. Funny mm -hmm. enough, he he came from MTV. He was a talk show personality. Mm -hmm. So I was going to come out, you know, the whole thing, like the storyboards. Now the lights go out, the music plays, I'm out mm -hmm. there, I do my whole speech, then I, I'm all hyped up in energy, then I interview the guests, they walk down, then we do a Q&A with the audience, you know, boom, boom, boom. It, it's all fun and everything. And... That will get people interested and say, oh, hey, look at what public access has someone. This kid's handicapped. He has a disability, but he's really amazing. He's really mm -hmm. captivating. He's really this. Like, he's really talking out of, out, of, you know, out of his butt or something because I do talk a lot. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm like, I can get people interested. But at the same time, if you're not going to give someone that opportunity and just... Hey, you know, like I said, it's not my karma, so it's not really that big of a deal. But what annoyed me was you being getting a whole run around and then being like, "Well, oh, by the way, you changed your mind." Yeah. So like, what was the point of that? Yeah, that stinks. But um, so what was your question? I'm sorry. Oh, do uh, you ever? Actually, that was my last question. I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't mind me. It's just one of those days. I'm still annoyed about that phone call. Uh, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when mm -hmm. we come back, I'm going to pass the show over to you. Okay. Me, Mark Medley. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Medley. 
Barry Papik. This is Peter Bruno. My name is Kyle Collier. This is Luis Santiago, uh, better known as Dynamite. I'm Richard Epcar. Nice shout. This is Gary and Mayhan. And this is Golder. And we both support Keith Andrew. And my name is Ron Wasserman, and I am supporting Keith Andrew and what he is doing. And you better do the same, or I'm going to come kick your ass. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 454. I'm, I'm here. It's a beautiful and talented Wedgie Street. Just want to say thank you for sticking with us. Hello. <laughs> now, if our people want to know what the talk show is about, basically the highlights, I'm showing people with a learning disability, someone who never went to college, who learns and reads at a fifth grade level, who's not educated. Look at what you're capable of doing when you're persistent and when you have a label placed on you. The idea is to show them that you can break that label and you can still amount to something. Again, hashtag break the labels. With that being said, I want to talk to you about your show and how can people be a part of it. And after that, my last question for you is, how do you feel about social media? Do you think that dictates your following and, and if people should work with you? First question, how people can join Cool Stories? You can just uh, go to coolstories.nyc and send me an email. Then you can see um, pictures of previous shows. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we're having a show this spring because um, I'm working on post-production for a short film called Bodega Cat. But um, by the fall, we will be up and doing our thing. So if anyone's interested, just give me an email, let me know, and just submit whatever work that you have, and we can talk. And what was the second question? Oh, how Sorry. do you feel about social media? Do you think social media dictates or not because we've been talking about the uh, <laughs> I almost said so-so industry I was like what is the so-so industry but uh, what, the entertainment world we've been talking about the entertainment business and everything so with social media what I call it can it make you or break you but with both uh, what we're the my made part of disability for what you're doing and for what I'm doing do you think social media helps or hurts um, I think it depends on the person and what you put on social media. Me, myself, um, I'm not a big social media person, but I know it's necessary. So I do Twitter and um, that's about all I really do. I, I do Twitter and I have a web page for my show and myself, but I don't do Facebook and I might do Instagram. It's it's just too much. I mean, I can't work and do acting and write and follow up with all this different type of social media. So I try to limit myself. But it, it's it's a necessary thing, unfortunately, in today's world where you have to be connected to find about other people and to have people find out about you. Because if someone wants to know about Keith, they're going to look on Facebook first. Unfortunately, I'm not there, but that's okay because I'm on Twitter and people will look there too. And then I'll probably avoid, uh, join Instagram just, you know, as a backup because I know Twitter and Instagram kind of go almost hand in hand. But it it's a, it's a good thing. Social media is a good thing and it's a bad thing because people are being social, but it's online and then we're forgetting how to connect with one another, which is not good because, you know, people need people. So it's, it's a, it's good to be able to find, you know, a friend that you went to grade school with and connect with them. But at the same time, you know, when people are on it all the time and they rely on it, it becomes a little much. No, I agree with you. And I remember Four and a half years ago when I approached you, I, you were actually on stage 32. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it, it's for people like us in the entertainment business, it, it's necessary because everyone else is doing it and you have to be able to be found and, and to see what else is going on. But, you know, other than that, other than 
you know, acting and things like that, I really don't put like, you know, me going out to celebrate with friends and stuff. I keep my personal life off of social media as much as I can. I mean, other people post me and I can't do anything about that, but I don't pers- post much of my personal life. It's just all acting things. As a matter of fact, Reggie Street is just um, my acting name and I have no social media under my social, my, 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 my legal name. No, I understand. It's always good to keep like a little dividing thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I was also told by um, an agent that even on social media, when they do find an actor or someone that they're wanting to represent, they do check out Facebook and things of like that. And if they see something they don't like, I mean, that could work against them and their clients. So then they may not, you know, cast them in a certain, you know, commercial or role because of something on social media. So people have to be aware of that, too. True, but they can always, you know, come up to you and say, you know, can you take this part down or can you edit it? You know, you can... True, true. But if the agent doesn't know something is there and let's say, let's say you get hired to work for um, Procter & Gamble for some product that they have. Now you're already cast in it, but Procter & Gamble Googles your name and then they see something on Facebook and you didn't think about it and your agent didn't think about it, but now the client has seen it and now you've lost the job. So it's just something that everyone on social media has to be aware of just, you know, and I'm sure everyone, you know, has heard this before. Just be careful what you post when you're, you know, in a particular field of work. No, absolutely. And it's always good, you know, to say, you know, and you know how people forget how to talk to each other like people. It's always good to say, you know, be professional and say, hey, you know, could you edit this? Or, hey, can you take this down? You know, just be a normal person. And that's what I mean. Communicate it. Not say, I don't like that. Take it down. And then, then that's it. It's kind of like, Okay, I didn't know we were becoming cavemen all of a sudden. It's like, hmm, Facebook, bad, no work. <laughs> it's kind of like, you can't have it both ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But my sure. last two questions for you is, I know you mentioned you're not on Facebook and uh, Instagram, but you are on Twitter, and your mm-hmm. old hashtag will be on the bottom of the screen. But I was wondering, are you on LinkedIn? Oh, yes. You know, now that I think about it, I am in LinkedIn, but that's strictly like for my my day job. So it's under my my legal name. So I really don't use that for acting at all. For acting, I just use Twitter. Um, I do Stage 32, which is a great network for the entertainment business. And that's about it for now. I'm, I'm sure... There's other things I need to do as far as that's concerned, but I'll deal with that when I cross that bridge. <laughs> now, same here. Now, my last question for you is wrapping up our interview segment. When I first approached you for the very first time when we did the demo interview, what made you say yes? When I approached you the second time to do a brand new interview, what made you say yes again? Well, um... I'm not very good at speaking, so I thought, well, let me do the demo interview and see how that goes, answering someone's questions, and I didn't like it. I mean, you did a good job, but I didn't just like, I didn't like the way I responded, so that's why I was like, you know, I don't like that interview, and I figured, well, hey, he wants to use me again, so let's give it another try, and so here I am. No, absolutely. Hey, you're supporting a good cause and making a new friend out of it. So it's a win-win. Yes. Now, stay tuned. I have a couple questions for you off the air. But sure. wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege to have you as a guest. And I'm looking Thanks, forward Kate. to part two down the road. That'll be cool.